duty, honor. We call upon our troopers in this our darkest hour. Our way of life is what we're fighting for. The flag that flies above us inspires us each day to give our very best in every way. It's a good day to die when you know the reasons why. Citizens, we fight for what is right. A noble sacrifice when duty calls, you pay the price for the Federation. I will give my life for the Federation. I will give my life. The Emperor is our eternal and omnipotent protector. He has sensed the deprivation and languish of his servants in these times, and has therefore sent me, his commissar, to reintegrate you disdainful scum back to his creed. Today, your education begins. And hold on, I'm getting a transmission from him now. Stop playing with that thing. I've just got to adjust this. Some adjustment. I still can't see who's in the chair with a fake German accent. Yes. Now look at this drawing of Applejack I drew on top of it. Oh ho, I am such a comic. I wonder if it will be raining. I wonder who the fuck I'm watching. Who are these guys in Trinity, New Mexico? Stand by. The founder of the Imperial Creed. Herr Hitler! Ja, was ist los? Ich habe keine Zeit hier rumzustehen. Ja, ich verstehe. Did you find him? Hitler! is out of the way. Congratulations, Professor. With Hitler removed... <laughs> oh yeah, because scientists are known to skip hypotheses and go straight to observation. Right, Prometheus? We are exploding! <laughs> I'm pressing every button I can find. Time will tell. Sooner or later. Alright, I, I have bitched enough in this intro scene. Let's just see what time will tell. Time will tell. intro cutscene I have ever seen. The music, the carnage, and when that dagger plunges into Europe and makes it bleed, you just know that you're in for a kick-ass game. Oh, and don't go anywhere just yet, where most games just dump you into a generic menu screen, Red Alert takes you right to the first level of the Soviet campaign. This is their story after all. Let's take a look. It's 
It's our favorite paranoid mass murderer responsible for turning an entire nation into a one-liner. Is it safe to speak? Of course. Go on. The kill time depends upon the weight of the subject. Here we see him talking to people who clearly aren't Russian, but let's let it slide for now. Uh, the children were terminated in less than 15 seconds. Oh, the children, you say? Perhaps you can also tell me about the nuclear vessels project. The total dead. Uh, hold on, I gotta act for a sec. And I will draw a happy face. Sorry guys, I just realized that I may have been stalling for time. Come my dear. I have an assignment which requires your special skills. I like to call it the hammer and sickle. Alright, let's get back to our first mission. But before we start, I want to make a little bit of a detour. Hopefully, some of you recall the Mega Man sequelitis where the necessity of tutorial lessons discussed. So, just for the sake of argument, let's pretend that I'm a giant fucking moron. This is the first game I've ever played in my life. Awaiting orders. Affirmative. Whoa! I shot that guy and the barrels around him exploded. I guess I can use terrain to accomplish my objectives. Okay, so I cleared out this part of the town, but what looks like two bunkers are blocking the bridge. But uh, what did the game blatantly show us earlier? Compare this to any strategy to games like StarCraft or any of the Warcraft series. The first level is almost inevitably build one yes. barracks and four farms. Command. Well, there's By nothing wrong command. with that. Wait, yes, yes there is. There's something wrong. We're part of the glorious PC gaming master race. We don't need to have our hands held and treated like idiots. Not to say Red Alert isn't a perfect game, it's got its flaws for sure. For example, the infantry are completely worthless and pretty much exist solely for comic relief. I'm not sure if it's intentional or not, but everything about these guys just makes me giggle. These little waddling fucks try to so hard at what they do, but... <laughs> oh, oh, we gotta see that again. You'll see them get eaten and licked clean by vicious huskies, torched and burned horribly, shot, exploded, squashed, and generally be little more than fodder for the laughter of terrible gods. I had tried my hardest to see if it was just me or that I just didn't know what their role in the game was. So here I gather about 20 or something riflemen and I try to take out this orchard because I might as well try shutting down the enemy's economy. Oh, well, it's not going too bad. In a few minutes I should... Well, I see the enemy base is completely open to attack, so I got something like 50 grenades over here. Now I'm gonna go drown their base in shrapnel. Now this is a lot better. A single grenade here is about a sixth the cost of a tank, and these are gonna crush the enemy base. Um, well, it is going pretty well. I actually think I won't need any other units to take out this base. Yes, uh, is this Authentic Russian Flag Company? <laughs> yeah, it's me again. So despite the Soviets being the main focus of the story, the Allied campaign is a lot more interesting. At the start, you're introduced to these two generals, Stavros, a Greek general, and Esling, a German officer. This is a pretty interesting juxtaposition, since soldiers from the old Axis are now the main characters, and they're actually quite likable. The Greek general Stavros actually has one of the most interesting story arcs. We see him first as a determined and intelligent general. As the game progresses, his desperation and depression increases as the Soviets occupy his beloved home country and literally bomb the Parthenon, the temple of the goddess of courage and justice. Later, we get introduced to not Einstein who tells us about the Iron Curtain project and his face really says everything. General Stavros' story arc finds closure at the end of the Allied campaign. Here we see some guy that looks like Marty McFly. Uh, and he finds Stalin among the rubble of Moscow. Alive, but just barely. However, Figure in the Darkness tells him to look the other way. I believe you heard me, Private. 
I don't see anyone here. Do you? No, sir. I don't see anyone. Must have been the wind I heard. That's what I thought. Now move out. Ooh, Stavros is cold as ice! He will stuff a tube sock into your mouth and crush your head with a boulder. Well, that was a bit of an underreaction to killing the most infamous dictator of your time. Anyways, among these work characters work we also have Tanya, who I'm pretty proud to say is not only a strong female lead, but she does so without being a Mary Sue, which for 1995 and ironically even today, is incredibly rare and extremely refreshing. unit which isn't completely worthless since she can insta-give anyone a long range and can plant bombs to insta-kill buildings. Seriously, what can be better than having such a character in your game? Having three, of course! Now, as I said earlier, Red Alert isn't really a perfect game, but that's actually what makes it so fantastic. It wouldn't be nearly as memorable if the balance wasn't so skewed. Soviets get amazing towers, amazing aircraft, amazing tanks, and in skirmish mode they even get Tanya. And what's the best thing that allies get? Apache copters that are crippled by the fact that they need to hold still to fire. It basically means they can only kill stationary targets. Look at how many times they have to reposition just to kill this freaking ore miner. At least the allies have the spy satellite going for them, which comes at no cost and basically acts as a radar station that reveals the whole map. Which means you can sell that stupid top hat looking thing. It really matters little in the end, because one of the first things you'll figure out, and when I first played this game at 8 years old, I did, is that you can win any mission by straight up tank rushing. Infantry are worthless. Aircraft are only good for surgical strikes, so tanks really end up being the only unit you build other than transport. Anyways, let's see how our main man Stalin is doing. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I like you, Bredenko. I'll kill you last. Oh hey, it's Joseph Kukin, writer, director, and actor in almost all of Wispet's productions. I wonder what character he's playing in this timeline. Nadia, this tea is excellent. Don't you mean this tea is to die for? Incompetence will not be tolerated. We cannot allow you to endanger the Iron Curtain project any longer. I'm glad you agree. Wow, he literally died of overacting. Mmm, the fake tea in this empty glass. Excellent. It's got that refreshing aftertaste of poison. <laughs> have liberated Europe at last! Oh hey, good old Joe's back. Tea? Well, why not? <laughs>
You'd think that after what happened with Kredenko, Stalin would be a little more careful of Nadia's tea. Ah oh, well, it's not like he was notorious for slaughtering thousands of his own out of sheer paranoia. Poison? You bitch! Fight our battles where you must, and you'll remain our loyal and obedient servant. For the foreseeable future. The foreseeable future. Comrade Chairman, I am the future.